Cerebrovascular Disease, Assessment and Treatment. There are two main types of stroke. An ischemic stroke, which is when there is a blocked artery that reduces blood flow to the brain, and a hemorrhagic stroke, which is when there is an artery in the brain that breaks, creating a pool of blood that damages the brain. Of the two, ischemic strokes are much more common, and the amount of damage they cause is related to the parts of the brain that are affected and how long the brain suffers from reduced blood flow. Now, if symptoms self-resolve within 24 hours, it's called a transient ischemic attack, and there are usually minimal long-term problems. After heart disease and cancer, stroke is the third leading cause of death in the Western world. 20% of strokes are hemorrhagic, 80% of strokes are ischemic, mostly due to embolus, but some due to small vessel disease in the brain, and occasionally from prothrombotic disorders such as myeloma or sickle cell. The main sources of emboli, cardiogenic, including left atrium or ventricle, aortic arch, middle cerebral artery, carotid artery, vertebral artery. Carotid artery disease may lead to vascular surgery. A stenosis in the carotid causes problems because there is potential debris that could embolize to the cerebral circulation. The reduced flow to the brain as a result of the stenosis is of relatively low significance because of the good collateral supply. In your neck are two major blood vessels called the carotid arteries which carry oxygen-rich blood from your heart to your brain. You can feel the pulse of the carotid artery in the side of your neck. Fatty deposits, called atherosclerotic plaques, can build up inside the carotid artery. These plaques can narrow the passageway of the artery and interfere with blood flow to the brain. This blockage or narrowing is called a stenosis. If blood flow to the brain is blocked temporarily, a transient ischemic attack, also known as a TIA, may occur. When the blood flow is completely obstructed, as in a carotid artery blockage, a stroke can occur. Brain receives blood from the left and right internal carotid arteries, as well as the left and right vertebral arteries, which come together to form the basilar artery. The internal carotid arteries turn into the left and right middle cerebral arteries, which serve the lateral portions of the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes of the brain. Each of the internal carotid arteries also gives off branches called the anterior cerebral arteries, which serve the medial portion of the frontal and parietal lobes, and connect with one another with a short little connecting blood vessel called the anterior communicating artery. Meanwhile, the vertebral arteries and basilar arteries give off branches to supply the cerebellum and the brainstem. In addition, the basilar artery divides to become the right and left posterior cerebral artery, which mainly serves the occipital lobe and some of the temporal lobe as well as the thalamus. Finally, the internal carotid arteries each give off a branch called the posterior communicating artery, which attaches to the posterior arteries on each side. So together, the main arteries and the communicating arteries complete what is called the Circle of Willis, a ring where blood can circulate from one side to the other in case of a blockage. The Circle of Willis offers alternative ways for blood to get around an obstructed vessel. In general, the brain can get by on diminished blood flow, especially when it happens gradually because that allows enough time for collateral circulation to develop which is where a nearby blood vessel starts sending out branches of blood vessels to serve an area that's in need. The carotids serve the anterior part of the brain whereas the vertebral arteries serve the posterior part of the brain. It is crucial to establish if the patient's symptoms are from the anterior circulation or carotid territory or posterior circulation or vertebro basilar territory. Anterior circulation features, 1. Hemimeter or hemisensory deficit, 2. Monocular visual blindness, also known as amaurosis fugax, 3. Higher cortical dysfunction, for example dysphasia or visuospatial neglect. 
posterior circulation features, dysarthria, diplopia or vertigo or nystagmus, homonymous hemianopia, ataxia or gait abnormalities, bilateral blindness. Stroke symptoms depend on the exact part of the brain that is affected. For example, an anterior or middle cerebral artery stroke can cause numbness and sudden muscle weakness. If a stroke affects the Broca area, which is usually the left frontal lobe, or the Wernicke's area, which is usually the left temporal lobe, then it can cause slurred speech or difficulty understanding speech respectively. If there's a posterior cerebral artery stroke, then it can affect vision. Lastly, there are other features sometimes erroneously ascribed to carotid territory disease. These are nonspecific, collapse or loss of consciousness, seizures, headaches. So to summarize, it's essential to clarify that the presentation is with carotid territory symptoms. The symptoms are on the appropriate side to the stenosis, opposite side for hemimeter or hemisensory deficit. Same side for monocular visual loss, dominant side for higher cortical dysfunction. All patients presenting with a stroke or transient ischemic attack should have duplex ultrasound of their carotid arteries within 24 hours. This indicates the degree of stenosis, less than 50%, no indication for surgery 50 to 70%, Moderate benefit from surgery 70 to 99%, significant benefit from surgery 100%, occluded, no benefit from surgery, because there is no flow to carry emboli to the brain. All patients with a stroke or TIA should also have a brain scan, CT or MRI. Rarely, where doubt exists about the carotid duplex, a CT angiogram or MR angiogram can help. All patients should have best medical therapy as a minimum, but those with a 70 to 99% stenosis should also undergo surgery. There is some debate about those with a 50 to 70% stenosis. You would need to do 13 carotid endarterectomies to prevent one stroke in this group, compared with 6 in the 70 to 99% group. Best medical therapy for all, which includes Smoking cessation, antiplatelet agent, usually aspirin or clopidogrel, statin irrespective of baseline cholesterol, control of hypertension and aim for BP less than 140 over 90, control of blood glucose and diabetics exercise. Before your procedure, an intravenous line will be started. A carotid and darterectomy is usually done under general anesthesia, which will put you to sleep for the duration of the procedure. In this case, a breathing tube will be inserted through your mouth and into your windpipe to help you breathe during the operation. Sometimes a carotid and darterectomy is done with local anesthesia. If local anesthesia is used, you will remain awake, but your neck will be numbed. You will probably also receive some sedation. On the side of your neck along the blocked artery, the surgeon will make an incision that may run from just behind. A private health check or when a stenosis is found following a stroke on the non-stroke side. There is considerable debate about the best management of these patients. The asymptomatic carotid surgery trial and the asymptomatic carotid atherosclerosis study broadly identified a small benefit, mainly in men and minimal in women, no benefit in women over 75. It is largely left to individual clinician and patient choice as to whether or not to offer surgery in addition to best medical therapy. Vascular and endovascular surgery at a glance was used as the primary source for this educational presentation.